do the Bighorn Sheep survey results first before we look at the proposal? Th that was my suggestion, yep. Mr. Chair, is that um, I'd maybe give just a little bit of background and uh, okay. um, kind of stage the setting of where we're at right now in this whole process and then have Cindy come up and provide you some results from the survey that was conducted and then we'll go into the action sheet and then I'll provide a little more information to you if that would be suitable. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Um, just to maybe set the stage and provide a little more background where we're at right now with this uh, Black Hills sheep, uh, uh, big Black Hills bighorn sheep hunting season in respect to um, um, really the discussion of an auction tag. Um, looking back, even about a year ago, we've had some ongoing discussions that started about some bighorn sheep management and trying to enhance um, our sheep populations in South Dakota and try to address some issues that come with bighorn sheep management. Um, we've had a group of individuals that are obviously very interested in bighorn sheep management and hunting opportunities. We've had some very good discussions with those folks. Back in February, we actually um, assisted them <laughs> in hosting a meeting down in Chamberlain, which uh, Chair Olson and Commissioner Spies both attended, and myself and John Kant and Andy Lindblom were there from the department, and there was probably 40, 45 other individuals, something like that, that were there that have a high interest in bighorn sheep hunting and management, and had a very good day, very good discussion about many things. Um, then at the May Commission meeting when we were out in Custer State Park, um, Matt Rippenthorpe and um, some of the folks from the group that are interested in bighorn sheep came and spoke to you, the commissioners, um, about the concept and about bighorn sheep management and asked that we look at information and put some more together for you. And one of those components was the concept of an auction tag to help raise money to put towards bighorn sheep management here in South Dakota. So the request of the commission was to bring today some information in a package for your consideration as we move forward with this process, and that's what we'll do here shortly. Um, since May, we've had an actual couple other meetings um, with the group to talk about things that we've been working on from um, components of the management plan to revise to the auction tag to an MOU with uh, the Midwest Chapter Sheep Foundation to, to work on bighorn sheep management. Um, and I'm going to share some of that with you today at, uh, after we're concluding here with the action sheet. Um, and then uh, in part of those discussions, what we had talked about because of the auction tag um, and the concept being available to residents and non-residents alike was to go out and actually gauge our bighorn sheep hunters to get their perspective on that. And so what we did is actually did a survey that Cindy put together that was sent out to our bighorn sheep applicants here in South Dakota, and she's gonna provide a few more details on that, give you a few of the results of that, and I think that'll help provide you some more information as we go into our discussion of the action sheet that's in your booklet. So if I may, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it over to Cindy and provide some information on that bighorn sheep survey. Morning, Mr. Chair, Commission, Secretary Bunk. Um, as Tom said, we, in at the end of June, we put out a survey of the bighorn sheep applicants within uh, the state, and it ran from June 26th to the data was downloaded on July 23rd, so roughly a month. Um, before we put the survey out, we looked at our applicants to see the best way to go about surveying. Over 93% of our bighorn sheep applicants, and all, including those who just um, applied for a point, a preference point as well, over 93% of those had email addresses. So this was, it was decided to just do an online survey and not, um, not include a mail survey as well. We also looked to see about the, how many were also elk hunters and deer hunters as whether or not we needed to do multi, um, survey different subsamples. 99.8% um, of our bighorn applicants also either hunted elk and deer or one of the others so we just just did the one survey of the bighorn sheep applicants so as i said it was um we did an online survey we went through uh using survey monkey similar to how we do the rest of our our harvest survey online and um, some of the other public opinions we had a, a total of just shy of five thousand bighorn sheep applicants as well as those who applied for just the preference point um, 
little over 4,600 of those had the email that, that comes out to roughly 93%. Um, once you get into email addresses that bounce back, also people who apply and one email is on there, the same email address goes to six different applicants. Um, because that get, <coughs> we limited it to three emails, so three collectors. So um, the same email address could be on three different individuals, and that's just to kind of keep the um, number of emails we send to the same address down, and it's also to kind of help curb the same individual filling out a survey multiple times. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we, it, was, it ran for approximately a month. Um, the way this worked is an email was generated and sent to all um, our applicants that we had the email for and it explained why we were doing the survey, gave a little bit of background information about the process and asked them to please, you know, click on the link and, and fill out um, what it essentially was formatted as four questions. We had a, over a 55% response rate, which is um, just, just over 2,400 respondents uh, filled out the survey. Um, and just before I get into the results, the way we formatted the questions, they all were formatted similarly and they ranged from a scale of one to five, where one being kind of the negative end of the, the spectrum, depending on whether we're asking about agreement, uh, importance, support, or opposition. So the lower end of the scale is, is the negative. Five um, was the most positive and then the neutral point is, is three, was how all these questions were formatted. So the first question here we asked um, was just to gauge how important or unimportant our um, applicants felt the opportunity to hunt bighorn sheep in South Dakota was. And um, at the, the, the top up here, the end number, that's just to give you an idea of the total number of respondents who answered that particular question. So these percentages are out of, on this particular question, are out of the 2,410. And you can see um, that the, the majority of our respondents were on the, the higher end of the scale. Um, over 70% felt it was either important or very important to, um, to have the opportunity to hunt bighorn sheep in South Dakota. The number, to kind of tell you what these little numbers are above the bars, that's just the exact percentage point, just to make it a little easier to read. So the second question we asked um, actually broke into five separate items. And we asked um, our respondents to state how strongly they agreed or disagreed with each of the five statements. Um, and then the first statement we asked was the public and conservation groups and GFMP should, uh, do not have to worry about bighorn sheep populations in South Dakota because they'll, uh, they can recover and increase without help. And this was a kind of engaged, you know, just you know, the knowledge level of, of management of bighorn sheep and, and wh whether or not they agreed with this. And you can see that um, the vast majority disagreed with this statement. Um, it's over 90% either strongly disagreed or disagreed with the statement. And again, this one's um, roughly 2,400 people responded to this, this question. The next item within that same group, we asked about um, how strongly they agreed or disagreed with that research and management focused on problems with disease and bighorn sheep could help increase the population in South Dakota. Again, a um, little over 2,400 people answered this item and the majority of those were on the, um, the positive end of the spectrum with a, agreeing or strongly agreeing with this, um, over 90%, just, just, just over. Uh, the third item within that same question bank um, wanted to know how the agreement or disagreement with the notion that the public and conservation groups as well as the department should work together to uh, manage bighorn sheep populations across the state. And again, um, we have just over 90% of respondents of the 2,400 respondents who agreed or strongly agreed that these groups should work together to manage the bighorn sheep. Um, the fourth uh, item within that question bank had to do with improving habitat for bighorn sheep and that could in help increase population in the state. And again, our respond whoops, wrong button. Our respondents, um, the majority of them agreed or strongly agreed with this statement. And the final uh, 
uh, item within question number two had to do with the relocate, uh, relocating bighorn sheep from outside the area, whether it's other states or other provinces, um, into disease-free um, areas of the Black Hills, and that, how, that could help increase populations within the state. And again, out of 2,400 respondents, the majority of them did indicate that I either agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. So the third question we, um, I think I'm on the third question. The third question we asked was, uh, did they feel, did the respondents feel we should use additional funds for managing bighorn sheep to expand population and potentially increase re resident tag quota um, for bighorn sheep in South Dakota? And I didn't, in addition to this question, there was, um, and I have a handout here that gives you the full wording of each question we asked. We also included what pot some potential uses of this additional funding might include. And just to save space on the slide, I didn't put out all the sentence. But again, um, you know, about 87% of the 2,400 people who answered this question agreed or strongly agreed that um, additional fund to, funds to manage the bighorn sheep, um, they agreed with that idea. And so then the, uh, the final question, the, I guess the, the big question here was, we asked them how strongly they supported or opposed um, the idea of having a one auction tag for bighorn sheep um, and making that available to both residents and non-residents. And prior to this question being asked, again, we had a, a paragraph above the question that reiterated what was said in the, pre the email that they initially received, kind of explaining again what the, um, the auction tag was and how, the, the, how it would be proposed to go about. And um, we get a little bit more of a split in the distribution here. Um, about 54% or 53% are on the um, positive end, either supporting or strongly supporting. You get uh, roughly 36% um, either strongly oppose or oppose it. And then there's about, uh, I guess, 11% in them that are fairly neutral on the, the notion. Um, and yeah. The other thing is we also asked, we gave them the opportunity to provide additional comments. And of the roughly over 2,400 responses that we got, I think it was, we had um, 13, over 1,300 comments were provided. And I, I don't have the breakdown for that here, but following the meeting, I have prepared to, to send you guys electronically. It's a 140 pages of comments. Um, and, and, it, and that, that ranges from individuals who um, stated that they, you know, were opposed to the idea as well as the individuals who were in support of it. So it's a, a mix of the comments, but I, I didn't want to attempt to print all that out and bring it to you, but I'll be happy to send it to you after the meeting so you have that as well. And that's, that was a pretty quick and dirty uh, survey, but if you have any questions, happy to answer it. Questions for Cindy on the survey? Thank you very much. Yep. Barry? Go ahead, Barry. I just to uh, so those that opposed it, I mean, what is there a kind of a, a reason that stood out that they were opposed? Um, when you look at the comments, there are, I don't know the exact number. I don't want to give you exact percentage, but there's a high percentage of those who indicate, um, discuss the notion of residents versus non-residents. Um, and that, you know, I don't know, I haven't run the numbers for sure to be able to tell you exactly that people who oppose, and this is why. Um, but that is, when you, you get into the comments, you'll, that's one that really stands out. And, um, but, but there are, there are a wide variety of, of responses as well.